Okay, um, I'm here today with another review. Now this review is a bit different. Now the Class 66 Rocks channel has finally, and I mean finally, reviewed all my diesel locomotives, which took absolutely ages I must say, and we're now moving on to the steam locomotives that I've got. So I'm hoping to get these few out of the way before the end of 2011, and fingers crossed, that 2012 will have all new locos that we can just review out of the box as they're bought or bought for Christmas or whatever really. So let's have a look at what we're looking at. Obviously today we're looking at a Hornby locomotive. Um, this isn't the particular box to this loco but I think that all the Hornby boxes look the same to be honest. Um, obviously it wasn't 79 95 um, it's just a standard Hornby box as you can tell. So with that out the way, let's have a look what we're looking at. Now today we are looking at the Hornby class T9, or well, I shouldn't really say class T9, I'm not too sure if it's pronounced that, I think it's Hornby T9. Um, it's also known as the Greyhound, um, I'm not too sure why, but if you do know please leave your comments below because I'd be interested to find out. Now this particular loco um, obviously not the same number. I saw it at the Bodmin and Wanford Railway back in July during the summer holidays um, and I was lucky enough along with my dad to be invited into the engine shed with a few other people and we got to stand on the inside of the cab. So if you look on my YouTube channel there is a video of that um, but it was quite dark in there with no lighting so I did the best I could to film it. So let's have a look at this loco then. Now obviously the first thing we can see is we've got this little part here. Um, I think it's supposed to represent brass or something like that. Um, but it doesn't matter. Um, obviously we've got wire handrails down the sides here. Well they're, I don't know whether they're wire or plastic but I think they're wire and spray black. You have to be very careful not to snap anything like that off. Um, obviously we can see it's got four wheels there, like one, two, three, four. Um, obviously, the front bogey has got four on as well. Um, but as we can see here, we've got loads of detailing, and the Hornby Steam Locos always seem to have high amounts of detailing on them, which is an excellent feature. Um, obviously, as we can see, it is a 3P, I think, if that can call this picking it up, and it's number 30726. Um, now, as you can see here, if we can just disconnect the tender, that we've fitted our own fireman and a driver inside. Um, this was a bit tricky because we were holding tweezers and trying to get them to go in and believe me it is an absolute nightmare when you're trying to get them in but we did get it in eventually and it looks absolutely superb when it's running on the layout um, obviously the tender is a bit different some Hornby steam locos originally you just plug the tender into the slot hole like well obviously <laughs> into the that hole on the loco as you can see here and this little thing here on the tender. But Hornby have since upgraded and are now using these. They are like a little white plug that goes from the loco into the tender. Um, they are quite fiddly as people who may have Hornby locos may have noticed. Um, trying to get them in is an absolute nightmare. Um, but we did get it in eventually after trying to keep calm because every time you tried it just kept slipping about all over the place but it went in eventually um, as you can see here the tender is a short one um, I'm not too sure whether they have a certain name for the tender um, it's got some artificial coal in it um, it is the lake crest 
and as you may have noticed it is lightly weathered if you can just see that um, obviously we've fitted some detailing underneath the tender um, I'm not a huge um, what do you call it now enthusiast on steam as I am on diesel um, I mean I know some things about steam and some things I don't but if you know what this detailing was for in real life or anything like that I'd be grateful if you could let me know um, as I seem to know quite a bit about diesels as I think I've been brought up more watching them than I have watching steam because by the time I was born um, I think steam was long gone so obviously it's got six wheels on the tender um, on the back here we've fitted an NEM coupling yep just there um, sprung loaded buffers that are sticking a bit so if we take a look at the front now without dropping it this is proving a bit hard we can obviously see I have fitted some head code discs um, now these were I think for freight um, how I fitted them so this loco will be doing some freight work um, sprung loaded buffers on the front as you can see we fitted a bit of detailing to it there but I'm just trying my hardest not to <laughs> drop it um, there's even a little shed plate just under there and I would tell you what it says but I can't really see I'm not too sure if there's an A there or is that 72 73 I'm not too sure but if you do know what said code this loco actually was in real life I'd be grateful if you could let me know um, so if we turn it around we can see again that it's the same obviously detailing wise on the side um, but if we have a look at the top of the loco now we can see the detailing on the top is just fantastic from the I think are the steam pipes um, for something and the detailing here it's just absolutely amazing um, it is such a nice loco as well um, when it's running but I thought I'd show it you just so you know what sort of steam locos we do have on the loft layout which this loco will be running on permanently um, so my new layouts will have all different locos running but this one is staying on the loft layout but that's it basically the Hornby T9